I'm Wendy Young from Leamington Spa, um, day 54, I think, of the lockdown for us. Um, here's something I wrote on day 44, about 10 days ago. You can see that uh, we are now starting to look a bit like we've been in lockdown for a while. <laughs> um, here goes. Luke 15, the new international version, says, um, Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp? sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Today's day 44 alone at home for Joe and me. We started a week earlier than the official lockdown was announced because I couldn't maintain social distancing measures at work. We've been watching the news once daily, not to get overwhelmed, but not to lose track of the very realness of what is going on either. We did our time as two sick people somewhere a few weeks in, and although Joe was much more ill than I was, with what we can only guess was probably COVID-19, we are extremely relieved and grateful that even she got off fairly lightly, compared to what many others suffer and what our fears were. Our days have taken a slow, gentle rhythm, and we have enjoyed our beautiful garden and the delicious weather fully. We've had little visits from our family who live just around the corner. They press the doorbell, stand back a bit down the driveway, and we open the door and stand back a bit inside the house, maintaining six feet. We've been seeing their faces and hearing their voices, and that has made us feel a bit less lonely. We've mostly managed to stay very busy, to the point of wondering each night at bedtime where yet another day has gone. One of the things we've been doing together is building jigsaws. Our latest was a painting by Edmund Leighton from the Fine Art Collection. It was more difficult than we expected, and we followed what seems to be our usual pattern. After completing most of the border, Joe started on the night, because he was a whole complete image, and she could re recognise his pieces. I separated the greens from the maroons and fitted what seemed like one piece an hour, by shape, imageless. We'd work for a while, then take a well-deserved break in the sunshine and come back to it at intervals throughout the day. Two jigsaws ago, we bought a fantastic mobile foldable board with removable additional flaps. The whole thing can be carried from table to table or room to room easily, which is probably how this happened. Yes, that's a little hole right in the middle. We realized as we were excitedly putting the last few pieces we had available into their correct homes that we didn't have enough pieces, but we kept going hoping that that little piece would surprise us and just look different from how we imagined. Surely it's going to have to be one of the remaining five, four, three. It's such a very specific feeling when you finish a jigsaw and yet you can't really finish it because something's missing. Like a heavy little hot stone of something bitter has dropped to the bottom of your stomach. Like missing the A you studied so hard for in an important exam by one mark. Like realising you've got 99 instead of 100 sheep. Like knowing you've lost a coin and you really, really need it. We turned the house over. Firstly, we made sure the missing piece wasn't inside one of the folds or between two of the flaps or underneath the board. Then we checked sofas and other tables and lifted rugs and eventually we crawled around on the floor with a torch, checking under the fridge and the TV stand and the impossibly heavy love seat we bought recently. No, we couldn't see it. It was nowhere. Had to be somewhere, but wasn't anywhere. Maybe somehow inside the pocket of that fleece I was wearing that one day. No. Inside the hoover bag? Carefully squish inside the cover, pulling a terrible face. Nothing. We were deflated and folded the unfinished puzzle closed shut inside its elaborate board and slid it underneath the sofa, where we knew the missing piece was not out of sight. We decided not to talk about it, and we almost managed to move on to other hobbies. Reading the slow Finnish novel we were both trying to get through on separate Kindles, secretly doing a quick scan of whatever surface was within sight every now and again. We replanted little shrubs from their pots into the garden, checking whether we'd actually somehow managed to lose a puzzle piece into the lawn, growing so energetically. We never really stopped looking. Monday was cleaning day. Too grey and rainy to be sun tanning, so a good day for hoovering and mopping and dusting. Here too we fell into our easy familiar rhythm, Joe moving furniture for me to hoover under 
and then mopping the floor before we move things back together in place. As I lifted the mat in front of the stove and hoovered over the floor, something caught my eye. Oh, I, th I think I just saw it. I think I hoovered it up. Why didn't I stop in time? With great excitement, I took the hoover apart, checking inside every separate pipe while Jo felt around inside the dust bag, her fingers inside this time. We were losing enthusiasm when I spotted it still on the floor. We thought the colour of the missing piece would work, would be quite dark red, but on the slate floor it was perfectly camouflaged. Grinning like the Cheshire Cat, we got the jigsaw out from underneath the sofa and ta-da! It's finished! What a feeling when you find the piece, the sheep, the coin. But in the parables Jesus told, we are that missing piece. We are sheep number 100. We are the money that is so desperately needed. God the Father is looking for us. He is searching everywhere for us and wants to have us close to him. And where are we? Doing our own thing, minding our own business underneath the mat in the kitchen. Let him find you today. Let his face shine with joy over you, the one he had been looking for. Let him do a little happy jig when he finds you. Let him carry you on his shoulders. Don't hide from him. Surprise him by sitting at the table, waiting to eat with him. We don't really need to work hard at making time to be quiet in the presence of the Most High, do we? Not at the moment, not during lockdown. We have oodles of time. This is going to end, even if we don't exactly know how or when. In the meantime, why not open yourself up to being found and being rejoiced over? It will feel like nothing else on earth.